thousands of options and everyone having an opinion. It can be very overwhelming knowing what to do with your money and very difficult to know where to start. And that's fair enough too. Most of us weren't taught about how to manage our money. Hi, I'm Matt Hearn, Money Coach. And I have found that the journey to financial independence is similar to the journey to physical independence. Babies don't sprint out of their mother's womb. In fact, they're quite immobile living meal to meal. First, they must learn to roll, crawl, pull themselves up onto furniture before they can walk and eventually run. Similarly, with a journey to financial independence, we build our skills and stages. First, we live pay to pay until we learn cash flow management skills to build our financial well-being before we can then add investing and wealth creation skills on our journey to financial independence. I refer to this journey as the money mastery journey. And I have developed a model called the six stages of wealth creation to break it down into skills that you can build to on that journey to financial independence. I'd love to share that six stages of wealth creation with you right now to help you identify what's the best focus for your time and energy right now so you can get the most impact for the time that you spend managing your money. If you feel like you never have any savings and can never save a cent um, and perhaps are living pay to pay, then perhaps you're in the first stage of survival. Another indicator could be that you've got a credit card balance that you can't repay in full every single month and even your debt is growing. Your best first step is to take control of your money, which you do so by developing a plan of what is affordable to spend your money on and implementing a process of sticking to that plan. That's what I call about, I call implementing a budgeting system to take control of your money. Set yourself a target of accumulating $1,000 worth of savings. In the next stage, you may be feeling like you're never getting ahead. Perhaps you're consistently saving every single pay, but then every few months, uh, an unforeseen expense crops up that causes you to dip into your savings, which can be very demoralizing. What I've found is that many of those unforeseen expenses were actually foreseeable expenses. Um, the thing is that our brains are wired to think more of today than they are to think of tomorrow, which means we're not that great at planning for those expenses that are just over the horizon. So your best next step is to look at where you can save even more money so that you can plan for the predictable and get further ahead so that you're no longer living year to year with no savings, but you get, you've got a longer time horizon where you can then get into the horizon of the third stage of stability. In the third stage of stability, stability, you're consistently saving money and you're on track for your goals and your then life events that are maybe two or three years, years ahead. But perhaps you've got that nagging feeling that you should be doing more. And that's fair enough because you're not yet on track for all of your goals. Your best next step is to create a thorough plan to be on track for all of your goals, to optimize the wealth that you've currently got and invest for other goals. Also to thoroughly erect safety nets under your lifestyle so that you don't go backwards if misfortune strikes. Having implemented a thorough plan, you can be confident that you are on track to retire on your terms or what I call financial independence. So I've defined that as the age pension age of age 67 here in Australia at the moment and with a similar quality of lifestyle that you've got right now. So that's stage number four of confidence. There is no obligation to go past stage number four for many people. However, if you do want to retire with a higher quality of lifestyle or retire earlier than age 67, then you may want to choose the focus point of the confidence stage, which is accelerate. By accelerate, I mean borrowing to invest, also known as gearing or leverage. Now before stage number four, it is risky and premature to be considering those leverage strategies uh, because you need to first build your financial literacy and your financial capability to know what you're doing and do it in a risk managed way. But if you want to go and retire early or retire more comfortably, then at stage number four, try those acceleration strategies. And at stage number five of you have now become quite confident with uh, competent, sorry, with managing your money. Um, and if you really love managing your money and really get a kick out of it and lights you up, then you might want to get, move on to mastery of your money, in which case go from investing in mainstream investments to learning about non-mainstream investments and to also consider rather than buy and hold strategies, but to 
to do short term strategies as well. Now again, just like with stage number four, it's premature to do such strategies before then because you need to build your financial capability so that you know what you're doing. Um, but that's where your focus point is to master money, to get to stage number six. In the mastery stage, you can fund your lifestyle from just the income on your investments, not drawing down any capital at all. So your focus at the mastery stage is on how you can distribute that wealth to have the impact that you would love to have in the world. So just to recap, look at the outlook column to identify what stage you're currently at, then set your target for what you're going to achieve next, which you can achieve by using the focus, whether that be controlling your money, saving more, or creating a thorough plan. I'm Matt Hearn, Money Coach. I hope the six stages of wealth creation has been useful to you. And if it has, then I'd love to help you get control of your money so that you can spend smarter, save more, and afford what lights you up.